Hi everyone, it's Margaret Manning here and welcome to Mornings with 60 and Me. Today is Friday, it's July 29th and welcome to Friday and to almost the weekend. I uh, hope you're doing well this morning. I have my cup of tea. Um, this morning I've actually tried something different. I brought this tea yesterday, it's called Surprise Me. I thought it'd be fun to be surprised with my tea. I love tea. So I have made this tea and it's, it's a, it says it's made from herbs. So I've got peppermint, chamomile, linden, silver linden, and um, a few others that I couldn't actually recognize. Even Google didn't understand the translation. So <laughs> I'm drinking a surprise tea this morning and it's really tasty. It's minty. So anyway, I hope that you've got yours sitting there close to you. Um, relax. We're going to talk about things that happened, that happened in the world last night and um, get us ready for the weekend. I know a lot of you are on summer holidays, so you know, feel free to share what you're doing, where you are. Are you with friends, family, uh, spending time alone? Um, it's, it's just that time of the year, so share with us what you're up to. Um, this is what Mornings with 60 and Me really is about. It's about having a cup of tea and a chat, and um, just welcome, welcome here. So, um, in terms of the big news, well, the, the U.S. Democratic Convention is, is really dominating the news in, uh, worldwide, and, I, and I'm sure that all our women in the States are glued to the TV and um, you know, experiencing a fairly unique and momentous uh, uh, um, convention. Uh, Chelsea Clinton introduced her mother, Hillary, last night as she was st stood on stage and formally accepted the Democratic Party nomination for President of the United States. And uh, I watched most of it, and I thought it was a very um, caring and compassionate speech. Um, you know, it was emotional and, and quite inclusive, and um, the message of join us if you are, you know, enlisting the people that would appeal. And, you know, she did say repeatedly that um, that her plan was to include everybody and to, uh, to have the best interests of the whole country, Democrat, Republican, independent. So I thought in that respect, it was a very inclusive speech. Um, you know, she, she spoke at some of the themes that we talk about in 60 and Me, that we're stronger together as a community. Even though we may have different points of view, we stand together, we, we share together, talk together, and that brings um, a unity. Um, she, of course, is now off to the 50 states to put her case forward against Donald Trump, and um, I think the conversation is going to get pretty interesting. <laughs> so um, we'll be covering that as it goes. But um, one story I saw that was so sweet was um, the oldest um, a delegate there is a lady called Jerry Emmett. And she is 102, and she was obviously alive as a young child before women even had the vote. So she was quite uh, fascinating, and she just said very simply um, when she was interviewed, you know, choose your own party, but there should always be at least two parties, because we don't agree on everything. I'm just reading from the notes, and there should be a discussion and a debate. And I hope it's positive debate, because... That's what we need. That's what the world needs. So, okay, that's the U.S. Democratic Convention. Um, in around the world, uh, lots going on. Uh, in Syria, there is um, some interesting news. There's still about three hundred thousand people in Aleppo one of the big commercial centers that has been a battleground between the government forces and the um, rebels. And um, Russia, who's been working with on behalf, well, with the government of, of Syria to, to try to resolve this issue, has announced that there's going to be a, um, not a ceasefire, but they're going to open some humanitarian channels to let people out of the city, um, civilians, of course, and also unarmed rebels, uh, just a lot of people still left there. And then they've also offered a, a, another the channel out of the city for armed rebels uh, over the next three months and the news I've, I've been listening to is fairly cynical that anybody will take them up on it but it's it's an offer there and um, the sooner that that war is sorted out and and ended the better it will be for the whole world because it's obviously impacting the the migrant and refugee situation in Europe and other parts of the world as as well. And I'm sure these people want to be home. They want to be in their their own country. So that's um, what's happening in Syria. Um, in Europe, the uh, the conversation continues about whether terrorism is really the new normal. In France, um, President Hollande has announced the formation of a national guard. Um, there, there's a national guard in the United States, mostly civilians who have um, normal jobs and they just are called up when needed. And uh, President Hollande is forming this French National Guard in order to have um, a sense of security and I think also patriotism that fr the French are 
doing something positive to help with the um, horrific uh, activities that have been going on there, the attacks in Nice and, and uh, the other day in a church in, in Normandy. So um, the National Guard is forming and they're trying to boost the current reserve of 28,000 people by another 12,000. So they're taking it quite seriously in France. In Germany, uh, the big news yesterday was that uh, Chancellor Merkel has said that she, um, despite all the criticism and the uh, questioning of her migrant strategy, is not going to give up on it. She um, believes that it's the right thing to do. And many articles were talking about the fact that they've let uh, 1.2 million people into Germany this year, but only three or four people uh, have actually you know, done anything terrorist related. Um, so the proportion there, of course, has to be kept in perspective, but it's still a very scary um, situation. And the opinion polls are not for her. There are 57% of the people in Germany say that her policy for um, refugees has not worked. So Angela Merkel under pressure. Now, um, a kind of feel good, feel good story. <laughs> Um, I was reading an article um, from The Lancet, which is a very reputable magazine, um, science magazine, and it was saying that the world could save 68 or $69 billion if people were more active, that inactivity is costing the world a lot, in not only in money, but in lives, that millions of lives could be saved if we would just get out there and exercise. Okay, hands up. I know, I know how hard this is. We write about it all the time on 60 and Me. That whatever your exercise of choice, just do it. You know, get out this weekend, walk, swim, do some cardio, uh, bike ride. Um, just do something that gets your body moving. I guarantee you'll feel better for it. Not just physically, but mentally and emotionally too. But anyway, um, as I mentioned in another newscast, um, Pokemon, which is this new game from Nintendo, is doing its bit to get people out there in the, in the world and into nature, searching on their smartphones for little Pokemon characters. And there's a bit of controversy in uh, parts of the world like China, or sorry, Japan and um, United States, where they've led people to these kind of, you know, um, special uh, sites, like sensitive sites like Arlington uh, Cemetery and uh, the, the Peace Park in um, Hiroshima. And so there are people in, in these communities are trying to stop the Pokemon madness, but people are getting out there in the parks, um, you know, trying to find these characters, and it's good exercise, I guess. But you know, sometimes I wish that they could just invent a little pill that you know could, we could eat cheesecake and take the pill, and all would be well. <laughs> but it's not going to happen. But um, you know, we do wish about inventions sometimes, and I wanted to really close with just a question for you, which is, you know, we at Sixty and Me we get lots of um, uh, emails from people saying, oh, I wish somebody would organize this or create that. And um, it doesn't always work. So they ask for things like, um, you know, obviously comfortable shoes that are inexpensive, um, you know, trendy, stylish, plus size clothes um, for developers to build um, uh, retirement homes that are fun. <laughs> And also for, um, you know, like a roommate service for communes, all kinds of crazy uh, things that people, and they ask for uh, like a news channel in the morning for, for women over 60. And oh, we have that. <laughs> We have that. Just kidding. But you know, the thing is, um, we're, we're always trying to think of new things that are going to make life in our 60s um, more fun. So my question for today, but I must remind you before I do this, that go up to 60andme.com forward slash mornings and get this uh, the alerts first thing so you know when these news uh, um, items are released. I would appreciate your support and tell a friend about mornings with 60 and me too. But anyway, my question for the day is very simple. What product or service would you like someone to invent? You've got to have something that you've been wishing for. So what is the one product or service that you would like someone to invent? And we'll compare notes and see whether we've got any, um, any common threads. I hope you all have a wonderful day and a wonderful week and hope the sun is shining where you are. And uh, I look forward to speaking with you all together tomorrow, tomorrow morning on Mornings with 60 and Me. And please answer the question below, what is the one product or service that you'd like someone to invent for us women over 60? Thanks everyone, take very good care. Bye for now.